experience and the code enforcement in, officer. With engineering drawings is basically stamped, certifies it. But that's just, that's just my experience. Mr. Chairman, if I could just add something. Sure. Uh, Mr. Emery, I think what you might be thinking of is the certification on the plan uh, with respect to title insurance, which is sometimes required as an extra certification. Um, that may that be the doesn't, case. I mean, that's for title insurance purposes, and I believe that otherwise the stamp, uh, signed stamp is acceptable. There are no more questions on the actual plans themselves. We do have two issues before us tonight on this. One is the issue of completeness. And we do have a checklist that our planner has prepared for us. And Maureen, if you could just give us an idea of where we may be deficient in this, if we are at all. I see a few waiting areas and a partial. Uh, We've discussed some of this already, but yeah. maybe it may be worth going over. Yeah. Um, the applicant had was submitting a revised uh, field survey, which you now have, and I have received. Contour lines, uh, as indicated, the applicant has requested a revision excuse me, a waiver of the, the requirements of two-foot contours, which the town engineer has supported. Uh, also, the applicant has not submitted a full-blown stormwater management plan. Again, a waiver which the town engineer has not objected to. Okay. I'd like to covered the issue of completeness first since we really can't go much further without it. Um, are there any questions on the completeness of the application at this point in time? I'd, I'd just like to, to bring up and perhaps the representative from Fleet Bank um, can answer the question. Um, the evidence of right title or interest in the property, um, you alluded to what the interest was, but could you be more specific what, as the applicant, the Fleet Bank is the applicant without being the, the owner of the, of the property, what interest that is? Uh, I think Maureen might even have a copy. I had sent her in the mail today a copy of the purchase agreement between Fleet Bank and uh, the Hansons. I don't know if that clarifies your um, question. In the, I did receive an agreement which I forwarded to our town attorney and he reviewed it and agreed that there was uh, sufficient interest on the part of Fleet Bank to be bringing this application forward. Fleet Bank does not own the property, the Hansons do, but Fleet has an agreement with the Hansons to um, complete the subdivision, at, after which time they take ownership of one of the lots. Yeah, I, I think that's just important that that's part of the record. Any other issues on complete? Um, a question on the contour line, since it's indicated that it's partial and there is a waiver being um, requested, as I can't understand, there are some solid lines on here. For instance, there's one between the approximate ledge line and the 40 contour line. There are a couple of them as across the property going to Old Ocean House Road, and since they're not the same as contour lines, I don't know. Yeah, I can clarify those. Those are uh, marking soil boundaries. Okay. So the, the solid lines would be marking soil boundaries and the dashed lines would be indicating indication of a contour line. Is the approximate ledge ridge line meant to be a higher point than the 60 foot or is this site supposedly at the highest point on the property? The proposed building, the proposed building is at the highest spot. Mm -hmm. uh, going north of that uh, approximate ridge line, the site drops off fairly steeply. Um, I'm, I might find it helpful that there would be a little more indication of contours right around the house, especially since we do have a, um, a letter from Ms. Richardson concerning the drainage. And it's not clear to me since the only impact I see would be right around the house if there would be any flow from that driveway toward her lot or if it would come this side. I'm guessing it might go that way. And I'm not saying I'd want the whole lot in um, better contours. I don't even know how that could be done. Yeah, I, I think uh, given the soil conditions out there and the, I would say the small scale of the driveway, that any runoff would basically just infiltrate into the ground almost immediately after it exits the driveway, the, the, the paved surface of the driveway per se. I don't think you're going to see water running on the surface into her yard if that, if that was a concern. Uh, 
just based on the driveway, the existing drive that's down here is ditched such that the water will basically run down the length of the driveway down to uh, old Ocean House Road. Is it planned that the the driveway to this recommended building site would also the drainage would also follow the same pattern, or that would just go out in the yard somewhere? I think it could be a combination of the two. Any other questions? Once again, we're trying to assess completeness at this point. I mean, I guess we do have to vote on. Would. My best guess is that the contours came, were interpreted from a USGS map? That's correct. Is there any notation to that? Yes, there is. I believe it's uh, under note six, the last uh, half of note six. OK. And there's no relationship between the uh, septic system design elevations and those that are indicated on the plan. You're referring to the HHE 200? That's or? correct. No, I don't believe there would be. Those are, uh, let me just turn to that. I would suggest that if, if the topography is simply from the USGS map and that we have abutters who are concerned with uh, stormwater runoff, since there is no uh, site verification of topo, nor is there a uh, storm drainage report that uh, the town planner be provided with a copy of the uh, uh, USGS map so that we can see what what uh, drainage channels may be affected by or in the vicinity of this development, simply so we've covered that section of the ordinance. Under 9A, we're now looking for some additional information, basically. That's correct. Okay. Any other issues on completeness? Let me just summarize then. Um, on the application completeness, then we, we have some issues relating to the boundary line field survey, which we discussed concerning the, uh, the, the registration and the um, surveyor's certification. We also have a question on the contour lines. We're waiving the two-foot contours, but we are going to be requesting USGS maps to back that up. So there will be some additional information requested there. And we are waiving the stormwater management plan once again, looking for USGS maps to provide us some additional information on contours. Anything else? Do I have a motion on completeness? The application this time. Could I receive a motion, first of all, on the completeness of the application? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Ratzel. Be it ordered that the minor subdivision application by Fleet Bank for a three lot subdivision located on Old Ocean House Road is deemed to be complete in accordance with section 16.2-3 of the subdivision ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion on the completeness issue? All those in favor, signify by raising my hand. Opposed? The application is deemed complete. Now we can discuss the issue of where we go from here. Uh, Mr. Mayor, would you just give us a, uh, just a quick rundown on a minor subdivision and what are required as far as sidewalks, uh, roads, and so on and so forth? Uh, the board is required to uh, determine whether an application is complete and then can proceed immediately to determine whether an application can be approved or not. Uh, it's at the board's option whether or not you want to schedule a public hearing or to schedule a sidewalk. Okay. And how many abutters do we have on this property now? Um, I see one, two, three, is it four, is that it? Yeah. And then across the street, right? Yeah. yeah. There is one on the last Okay.
Well, let's discuss the issues. Um, we can go to approval tonight, or we can go for a site walk. I'm just curious, how many board members were on the original site walk? I know I was. I was you weren't there. You, you, you weren't I had there. the opportunity to walk it since that time. Since that time? <laughs> okay, I, I guess uh, then it's really only one, two of us. Okay. Uh, um, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, could I ask what our normal practice is if we have one with respect to minor subdivision? I'm trying to remember now how many we've done. I haven't done that really that many. Uh, we have sometimes gone to, to a pool if the, if the plan looks fairly simple, fairly straightforward, not requiring a site walk and all that. Mr. Chairman, it appears to me that the purpose of the site walk is to approve a house location. Um, that's really what we're, we're down to here. We have an existing house with an existing right. chamber system and then a recommended house location with an existing driveway. I believe that the applicant's asking that the driveway and uh, existing driveways all be part of this approval. Um, and I, I guess I will ask parenthetically, uh, are those in fact somehow already considered approved since they're built? This has been through one review process already. Okay, so I'll, I'll assume that. So that's really what we're talking about. Yeah. Does the board have enough information here that it feels it can go ahead and approve this with conditions? I guess that's the question. Mm -hmm. All right, that's right. If we do a sidewalk, a public hearing is also an option. So we would have to waive both of those in this case. I, for one, feel with conditions I could consider including. Okay. That's my feeling. I think I'll put that in the form of a motion. All right. If that's okay. Um, motion for the board to consider findings of fact. The applicant wishes to receive approval for the three lot subdivision located on Old Ocean House Road. Number two, this development requires minor subdivision review under section 16-2-3 of the subdivision ordinance. Three, the application certified as complete January 22nd, 1991 meeting of the planning board. Natural, number four, the natural topography of the of lot 18-2 requires sensitive building placement. Number five, the applicant has substantially addressed uh, the standards of the subdivision ordinance. Be it ordered that the request of Fleet Bank for minor subdivision approval of a three lot subdivision located on Old Ocean House Road and Route 77 be granted according to section 16-3-1 of the subdivision ordinance and the facts presented subject to the following conditions. That, number one, that the building site for lot 18-2 be limited to the area depicted on the plan. Two, that the applicant provide the town a performance guarantee under the provisions of section 16-2-4, I guess it's sub C, sub 7A. Now I'd like to add condition three, that no access be permitted from these lots directly onto Route 77. It's seconded. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? One more discussion, and it was uh, it was brought to mind because of the issue of the three lot subdivision. Because I keep looking at, at, at this as two lots. It's the Merrill North Star right. Bank share that's the third lot. That's right. There's no way of determining of understanding that on this plan, as far as I can see graphically. That's why I asked the question originally, and, I, and I'd walked it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think. I would like to add a condition that, that this plan reflect somehow that this, what the third lot is, or somehow these lots are numbered so that we understand where those three lots are. You, everyone here understands where they are, but uh, I think it really needs to be much more clearly depicted so there's absolutely no confusion. Yeah, I believe this lot is already defined as a lot as far as bearings and distances and recorded as such. It's just when I look at the plan, I, uh, there's, why isn't lot 2976, the one in the upper left-hand corner, 
that appears to be as much of three lots as any other of these lots would be. I'm sorry, could you? I, I just don't understand how I know which one of these, where the three lots are that, that this plan is referring to. Oh, I see. I mean, I could go to the deed and that will tell me right away, but uh, this is a plan that has our signature on it. It would seem to me that it should very clearly depict what the three lots are. Basically, what Mr. Emery is saying is we're going to sign a lot uh, a plan for a three lot subdivision. Mm -hmm. um, I've been through it and I've walked it and I asked the question, so if somebody's going to ask the question. You've got lot 18 1, 18 2, I'd expect to see lot 18 3 somewhere. I think what, we, what we've done is uh, this lot here is in the town is recorded as lot 18. This lot right here. This is recorded in the town, I believe, as 18 1. This whole parcel is recorded as 18 1 on the tax map. What we've yeah. done is we've called this 18 1. This 18 2. This is lot 18. Why don't we call that lot? Why don't we label it on the map as lot 18 0? Then we have to change the total area of the property. It's not longer 16.16 acres. That's correct. Oh, okay. Which, which now we now we say we have a three lot subdivision of 16.16 .16 acres, consisting of two lots as a three lot subdivision. Say that again. <laughs> I was hoping that might confuse you. <laughs> Basically, you've got a two-lot subdivision uh, on an application for three-lot subdivision, and they haven't coincided the, the figures here. Are you suggesting Either that or we vote to... Um, I, they definitely have to, to make that notation um, and, in, and include that in the, uh, the subdivision. Could we defer at this point to our planner for some suggestions? <laughs> now we get around this? Well, just so we'd be clear, is there any way that we can? Mr. Chairman, I just also would like to point out that uh, Note 5 states that the property is located on Town of Cape Elizabeth tax map number R2, lot 18 1. Yeah. Yeah. Number 9 says total number of lots proposed 2. I don't think that we have uh, the, sub the subdivision plan in front of us that the applicant is uh, asking us to sign. Well, the one the yeah. Quickly, researchers. <laughs> May I ask, what, hap what happened here was that I don't think the applicant can include that lot because the applicant doesn't own it. What yeah. had happened, the first lot went out and the broke the subdivision law when the second, lo the second division by whomever accomplished is what throws you into the subdivision. The first lot had gone out. I don't see how an applicant can bring in property that had then belonged to someone else and include it. It was the division into the second and third lots that threw it into state subdivision approval. At one point, so it, it's, we banged home enough. this whole thing right here. Right. Okay? We beat it out just this little part. And that was fine. Mm -hmm. two lots and no one cared. And then they sold this lot to Rick Weinshank. That's fine. And then when Mr. Weinshank came to the board and tried to split this, it was discovered that this division plus this within five years brought up the subdivision of the law. Right. Stay. If he had waited a couple of years, uh, it wouldn't be a problem. But so basically, we've already created this lot by selling it off, which is no problem. Then to create these two, added to this, it, it creates a three-lot subdivision. Although we're only trying to create two at this point. I, I, I guess a notation on the plan to clarify which of the three lots on this plan would be probably more appropriate than trying to call this like on on on. on Note 9, total number of lots proposed. You wouldn't want to put three because we're not really proposing three lots on this plan. We're only proposing two lots. Uh, I know it might be an order saying uh, subdivision approval required because of transfer of this lot previously or something. So that together, this lot plus the proposed two lots created three lot subdivision. I think 
to me it sounds like we're going about this the wrong way, that the, there wasn't appropriate uh, organization on the applicant's part to know what you're bringing to us. Um, I might suggest the, the planning board um, table this issue unless we can think of a reasonable way to, to actually be approving what they're bringing before us. Um, What we're bringing to you is exactly what this is, proposed two-lot subdivision. I know, but we're, we're approving what, in, what we just read as a three-lot subdivision. And I'm saying that that motion, and only that, that motion, uh, doesn't uh, reflect what we have before us. What we really need is some clarifying language on the plan that we're signing, and it's not there. How, how would it be if you had, um, on the first non-lot lot, um, <laughs> Where you had your common ownership, which was in North Star Bank, as I, uh, as I understand it, have a deed reference on that lot, North Star Bank, to Joe and Susie Smith with a deed reference and a date. And then on your parcel that eventually becomes the two-lot subdivision, a reference of North Star Bank to Rick Weinshank. So that would at least show on the face of the plan where the first division occurred. And then our approval would show the second division creating the two lots, the second and third lots. And we're approving the second division. We're approving the second division. The first division did not technically throw it into approval. Right. And, excuse me, and so currently note five is correct that the property that we're discussing is now identified as lot 18-1 to differentiate from lot 18, but that when the subdivision is accomplished, 18-1 will apply only to one side and 18-2 will be the other. I, I believe, I'm on, I don't know, I believe that what we could do in order to um, at least clean up the motion is to just simply revise all references to three lot subdivisions to two lot subdivisions because that indeed is what the applicant is applying for. That would reflect point. the plan we have before us. Right. Mm -hmm. So that would mean revising number one in the findings of fact to reflect that the applicant wishes to receive approval for a two lot subdivision. Um, and it would also revise uh, the first paragraph of the decision so that it would be ordered that at the request of Fleet Bank for minor subdivision approval of a two-lot subdivision, that that approval be granted subject to the following conditions which have already been read into the record. Is that amendment acceptable? That's acceptable. Okay. If I could find my record. Uh -huh. um, I would like to suggest since the trigger is a three-lot subdivision, that one final findings of fact be ref referencing this first lot. I think that's important, and I think it's quite reasonable to ask the applicant to provide the planning board with a revised plat for signature since the owner is incorrect and so forth, and they could also make that notation on here that, you know, at a certain date, this lot was divided off. So it's clear why we're approving a two-lot subdivision. <coughs> I do have a revised plan with the new owners on it. If, when, uh, did the, when did the transfer take place, complete to the new owners? To clarify, the uh, fleet, which owned, as I said, this whole bit at one point, sold this parcel, the 16 acre parcel, to Mr. Weinshank, who financed that purchase through Maine Savings Bank. Maine Savings Bank foreclosed on Mr. Weinshank, so they're actually the ones who transferred the property to the Hanson through a foreclosure auction. Okay. Um, Fleet had, had an interest that they, they retained when they sold to Weinshank and Weinshank uh, financed through Maine Savings Bank. So they retained an interest in the property to that extent, which is why they're here with the Hansons tonight. But uh, the Fleet has not So they, they retained the junior mortgage on the property? Yeah, covering one half of the parcel. So Fleet hasn't owned it since they sold to Weinshank. Uh, Mr. Weinshank actually lost title to the Maine Savings Bank through foreclosure who Presumably, the option uh, sold it to the Hansons. 
And the, the record owner at this point. Yes, yeah, the record owner. There's been a deed from Main Savings Bank to the Hansons that's been recorded. Mm -hmm. Do you have any objection to adding a note 14 that simply references that earlier lot as the third lot? No, fine. And that would clarify in the future if these people want to do something or another, then just we're not involving them. And uh, yeah. I, I, I think we, if we don't make the clarification now, it'll never get made. Yeah. And this will just go on forever. What it is. We have a motion that was made and modified. Um, is there any question on the motion? Has it now been modified? Maybe we can get it read back, possibly, with the changes. I, I do have a question. I, I yeah. have a couple things. Um, one of the conditions was that the applicant provide a performance guarantee. And I'm just wondering what that uh, performance guarantee relating to what? It's not clear to me. Um. Typically, as part of subdivision approval, the applicant would submit an estimate of, of all the improvements that were going to be made to the site. Um, it wasn't submitted as part of this application. Uh, frankly, I'm not sure that there is anything that has to be submitted for a performance guarantee, but to protect the town's interest, I, I would recommend that condition at this time and that the applicant either submit us the estimate that we require or a letter stating that there is no need for a performance guarantee. Uh, you mean for improvements? to the property as far as the building? Um, I mean. Anything that's required to, if, if for some reason you were to alter drainage that would affect the subdivision approval, that would also be part. If you're installing a culvert at any point, that would be part of a performance guarantee. Since you're not building a road, those are the typical things that are covered. But I see. What improvements on the town on? Or is that part of the road? Um, that would still be there, I think. The other... Uh, question I had was about the access permit on Route 77. I, I might note that right now there's no not a frontage on Route 77 that would legally provide access for another lot. I guess it's, I think it's 200 feet required or 200, 200 per lot. 200 per lot and there's not 400 feet which would be required. And also I just wondered, uh, I guess I'd like to reserve, <laughs> I, I don't, not sure the, the ability of the planning board to um, prevent, I mean, the applicants don't have any plans that they have even put this house on here. They certainly don't have plans for another lot. But I just, I just not sure. I feel uncomfortable accepting that condition when uh, I'm not sure of the uh, ability of the planning board just to sort of say offhandedly that they can't put another lot on there. Uh, I think we would want to reserve our right to uh, to use if we we don't have the frontage. But if we had the frontage, uh, you know, I think the ordinance gives. People with frontage right to uh, develop the land as, as they as they can are able as the landowners. I mean, and barring a change in the ordinance, um, I just uh, thought I'd bring that up about the condition. It just uh, I have no specific instances, and I'm not trying to just say that we're going to put a, another lot on there. We don't even have the frontage for it, but I just uh, thought I'd bring that up about uh, the, that condition. I think what we're responding to is the dictates of the comprehensive plan. Now, while it's not an ordinance requirement, okay. so to speak, the planning board does uh, have the rights to put in conditions on approvals such as this to reflect the comprehensive plan, and that's what the board has chosen to do here. Okay. Okay. So um, unless the person making the motion is willing to take it back, it will stand. I'd ask that it, uh, that uh, uh, condition remain with the, okay. with the uh, this motion anyway. Thank you. Any other questions? Then we should probably go back over the motion. Do we have an understanding of what it is? Uh, I understood from Ms. Lardner that you wanted to add another findings of fact. Um, I, have I suggested it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've drafted, uh, in addition to the ones before you, uh, we could call it either 4.5 or number 6. Uh, this subdivision is a product of a prior subdivision of lot 18 creating lots 18-1. Would that be sufficient? Again. This subdivision is a product of a prior subdivision of lot 18, which created lot 18-1. That's right. That'll do it. Could I just raise one question? Since it's not numbered as lot 18 on there, would uh, um, book and pay, or not, map and lot number or lot reference be appropriate? That a lot, lot number be put on this plan? Pardon? That a lot number be put on this plan? No, that in, in the note you just mentioned that you would say, you know, map 
to lot 18. Okay. Thank you, Jim. As per tax map. Okay. Does the board understand the motion that we're voting on? Okay, then I will ask for all those in favor. Signify by raising your hand. Opposed? It's passed with conditions. Thank you very much. You, uh, we will be looking for a revised language on the plan so that we, at our next meeting, could sign the plan. Okay. If we don't have one, we can sign right now. Thank you very much. Is there any other business to come before the board at this time? Do we have any problems with the date of our next meeting? Um, the next workshop is February 5th. 5th? Yeah. And the public, the next evening meeting is February 19th. Okay. I, I personally would like to hold to that if we can. This man goes through some vacations, but it does, it's a time when I can be here for a full meeting. Um, so if there's no objections, I'd like to keep to the same schedule we've always had. I think as long as we can, I, mean, I, I won't be here on the 19th. Um, I think we'll get a quorum. Yep. If there's any problem with that date, please let Maureen know early enough so we can make some plans. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I so move. Second. Thank you. And good evening.